Lesson five, nested styles. Styles are used in InDesign to repeat visual attributes multiple times throughout a design. They are different from parent pages because they allow the attributes of the design element to be repeated. The design element does not need to repeat identically like it is required for when working with parent pages. In the examples on screen, the images are all different sizes and shapes, but the border, stroke, type, and color are all the same, including the same drop shadow. There are five types of styles in InDesign, object, paragraph, character, table, and cell. The visual attributes of the graphic frames in this example are repeated using an object style. The steps to save and apply a style are the same no matter which style is applied. Let's walk through the steps to save and apply an object style as a review. First, format an object or a paragraph or a character or a table or a cell and make sure it has all the attributes you are wanting to repeat in other ways throughout your design. Next, select the formatted element and create a new style using the Create New Style button at the bottom of the Styles panel. In this case, it is at the bottom of the Object Styles panel. Immediately double-click the new style to link your design element to that style and to be able to give it a custom name. The style is now saved and can be applied to more design elements. Applying a style is as simple as selecting an object, or a paragraph, or a character, or a table, or a cell, and then clicking a style via the appropriate styles panel. It is also important to recognize when to use each different type of style. Object styles are pretty straightforward. Use them to format object settings. Paragraph and character and table and cell styles are a little bit more complicated. However, there's a very simple way to approach these types of styles. Always start broad. Always create a paragraph style first. Only use a character style if a paragraph style cannot do what you need it to do. The same goes for table and cell styles. Use table styles first. Only use cell styles if a table cannot accomplish what you need it to do. Character styles are intended to be used inside paragraph styles. They are used to format part of a paragraph that is different from the rest of the paragraph. This means each character style should also have a paragraph style applied. A hyperlink is a good example. It should be formatted as a paragraph style first, in this case as body copy, so that it uses the same typeface and type size as the rest of the paragraph. But in order to make it blue and underlined, you will need to save it as an exception or as what we call a character style. The character style is uh, responsible for adding additional settings to make the text blue and underlined. You might describe a character style as being a nested paragraph style or nested inside a paragraph style. In this lesson, we will specifically talk about the concept of nesting styles. Nesting styles is the process of making one style based on another. This allows for the automation of complex designs. When the base style is edited, all instances of the style and any style that it is based on the original will update in the design. The only exception is if the attribute being edited has been disconnected from the original style. This concept is easier to understand when we look at visual examples. So let's jump over to InDesign and let's walk through a few examples together. In this demo, I will show you how to properly format and nest object, paragraph, and table styles. You can follow along with this demo by recreating the supplied samples or using the file that is supplied with this lesson. I have the object styles, paragraph styles, character styles, table styles, and cell styles panels open. On the first page of the demo file, I have created a nested set of object styles. Let's take a look at those settings. First, I created an object style for my graphic frames. I decided that everywhere I use a graphic frame in my design, I would like it to have 
a blue border with a blue bevel and emboss and a cyan drop shadow. I saved those settings using the graphic frame object style and then I applied them throughout my design. But later on in the design process, I decided that some of my frames should have the blue drop shadow and some should not. In this case, uh, the star does not have the drop shadow, but I still want it to have the same stroke and bevel pattern as all of the other graphic frames. So I saved it as a second object style and I labeled it graphic frame no shadow. When I created the graphic frame, I first created all of the settings and then created the graphic frame. To create the nested no shadow frame, I selected the object, so we can do it here as an example. It was linked to graphic frame, but I did not want it to be continued to be linked to it. So I created a new graphic frame and I followed the steps that we follow. We double click to immediately apply the style and then because it was going to have all the same attributes as the graphic frame, I labeled it graphic frame. And then I wanted to know what's going to be different. So maybe in this case, this graphic frame will be the same except for I want no bevel. When you nest styles, your style has to be based on something else. So my original style is always going to be the graphic frame style. So to get all of the attributes from the graphic frame style to be included, I am going to make this frame based on graphic frame, but I don't want it to have a bevel. So inside the object frame style options dialog, I'm gonna find the option for bevel and emboss and deselect it. So now I have my original graphic frame object style. I have a graphic frame with no bevel that I just created. You can see if I select this frame, it's linked to that and I have a graphic frame with no shadow. If we look at the settings for graphic frame no shadow, you can see it's the same as the no bevel except for its name no shadow. It is based on graphic frame and then I have unchecked the drop shadow. When you make a style based on another style, all of the attributes of that style will be repeated unless you disconnect or you break the connection between the original style and the nested style. So in the case of the star or the graphic frame no shadow, I've broken the connection between the drop shadow settings, but I have not broken the connection between the bevel or the stroke. And on the graphic frame no bevel, I have broken the connection between the bevel settings, but I have not broken the connection between the stroke and the drop shadow. A benefit of this is that if you decide to change an attribute, you can change it on the base or the original style. So on the graphic frame object style, if we go to edit that style and we edit anything about the style, the changes will flow downhill into our nested styles. So let's look at the stroke. The stroke has not been disconnected on any of the based on styles. So if we go to our fill setting and we change the stroke color from blue to be red, and I have preview selected here, you can see that on all of the frames that have graphic frame applied, which is three still, right? It's the rectangle and the circle and the oval, the red stroke changes, but it also changes on the based on star, which is no uh, drop shadow, and the based on rectangle, which is no bevel. I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna go back in. So now let's try to edit a style where we've disconnected the settings. So the drop shadow is light blue. If we find the drop shadow settings on our graphic frame object style, we could decide that we no longer want that, that drop shadow to be blue. We could change it to be yellow. But because I have removed the drop shadow from the graphic frame no shadow, nothing changes on that shadow because that setting is now disconnected. The same goes for the bevel. So if we edit the original or the base style and we find our bevel and emboss settings and decide that instead of uh, blue, we want to change it to be, let's do red. Everywhere I've used a bevel that's still connected will update, but because I've broken the connection between the bevel and the no bevel option, I don't see a change. 
And I'm using these as examples because it's very, very obvious to see that it is there or it's not there. But you could disconnect the thickness of your stroke or the color of your stroke. I could have changed one minor setting on my drop shadow and then it would disconnect the drop shadow settings between the original and the based on style. Paragraph styles can also be nested. Don't get them confused with character styles because character styles are different. If you think about it, in a sense, a character style could be considered as a nested paragraph style because it's based on a paragraph style. But it's only based on a paragraph style because the paragraph style is also applied in the same area. So for this demo, I only want to focus on paragraph styles. In the example on screen, I would like to use Minion Pro as the typeface for my body copy and for my headline. And if I decide to change the body copy setting, I want the headlines to also change. So to create my body copy and headline styles, I first formatted my paragraph. I did all of the formatting, I chose all of the settings, and then I saved a body copy style. Later, I decided to save a headline style. So I formatted my headline. But to do that, my headline was first linked to body copy. With the headline selected, I created a new style like we just did for the object styles, and then I changed it. So if we go into the headline paragraph style, you can see that it's based on body copy, and then any attributes I have not disconnected, so the color of the typeface, what the typeface is, uh, the alignment, anything like that, if I was to change it on body copy, it would still flow into the headline. But if we go to basic character formats, I have changed the size to 24 points, and I've changed the letting to 30 points. So I've broken the connection between the typeface size and the letting size so that I could create a distinction between headlines and body copy. But because I did not break the connection between the typeface color or the typeface itself, if I edit body copy with nothing selected, I can go to the basic character formats, and if I change Minion Pro to be Myriad Pro, and I have preview selected, you can see the typeface and the body copy changes, and then those changes flow downhill into the headline paragraph style, which is based on body copy. The last example I want to show you is how to create nested table styles. In this example, I created a table that has a two point blue border with 0.5 point blue strokes on the inside of the table. I also added an alternating fill pattern where every other, uh, every other set of two rows is light gray, white, light gray, white. But then throughout my design process, I decided that I want to have an alternate table option to be able to use. And in this case, I want all of the same settings except for the alternating fill will be light blue instead of light gray. To do this, I save the settings as a table style. So I created my first style with my cursor inside my table. I created the blue table gray background style. Then I duplicated it and I renamed it blue table, blue background, and I made sure it was based on the original blue table with the gray background style. To get the background colors to change inside the table styles options dialog, I went to the fill section and I only changed the color. I changed the color of the alternating fills from uh, blue, I'm sorry, from black to be blue and then I save the style. So now I have two styles. And if I edit the blue table gray background, I can expect the gray table to be updated. And if I edit the blue table blue background style, I would expect the blue table with the blue background to be updated. But because the blue table with the blue background is based on the one with the gray background, I also can expect that if I edit settings that have not been disconnected between the original and the based on style to also change. So if we come to the fill section, we've already broken the connection with the fill color. So the first uh, style has gray fill color, the based on style, we've broken the connection between that fill color and we've made it blue. But what if instead of having every two rows, two gray, two white, two blue, two white, we want to have every other. 
So in the blue table with the gray background, the original table style, if I change the settings to every other, you can see that it automatically updates on both tables because the blue background table is based on the gray background table and I have not yet broken the connection between the fill pattern. I've only broken the connection between the fill color. Nesting styles can be a complicated process. It is easy to break your styles, so I recommend starting slow. Use regular non-nested styles until you feel very comfortable with them. Then start to explore nesting styles where one style becomes what we're going to call the base style or the original style. And then one or more additional styles are based on that original style. If you get really good at saving nested styles, you may want to create multi-level nested styles. But again, start slow with simple concepts. Don't get too complex too quickly. Some basic ideas for nesting styles include having a common image frame with different color or different stroke thicknesses, using the same typeface for your body copy, headline, and subtitles, and formatting tables that have the same border, stroke, and fill colors with different fill color patterns or changing the fill color altogether. <laughs>